second. Should get some kind of notification. Um, and we are going to get started. I'm going to pass it over to William Roadhamel, and then um, you'll hear from me a little bit later. Well, thank you, Eric. I'm William Roadhamel, President and CEO of the Hendricks County Community Foundation, and thank you for joining us today. We're very excited about this wonderful opportunity to help the county distribute American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, you've got me here today, as well as our Vice President of Programs, Eric Hessel, and also joining us with the Community Foundation is Brian Chatfield, our Community Inclusion and Engagement Manager. Um, if you guys want to put any questions that come up during any part of the presentation in the chat box, we'll be monitoring that. We'll be taking questions at the end. Um, I'd ask you to, if you aren't already, mute yourself. I think we're pretty all pretty used to Zoom protocols by now, but uh, um, certainly if there are any questions or if, if we need to get you off mute at some point, put that in the chat box and we'll we'll, we'll do that as we go forward. So um, with that, I want to uh, kick it over to, well, here's our agenda for the day. We're going to start with uh, a few updates about ongoing and, and new uh, things that the Community Foundation is doing. Then we'll go through a quick ARPA overview of uh, the, the process in Hendricks County to this point, talk a little bit more about the competitive grants program with the application and reporting, and then we'll start taking Q&A questions. With that, I'll kick it over to Eric for our, uh, our updates. Thank you, William. So before we get deep into the ARPA information, we wanted to share some additional information for you all. Just a reminder that we have our community unity grants available. Those are on a rolling basis, focused on increased civic engagement, which includes inclusive inclusivity, diversity, equity, and accessibility, any voter education and engagement efforts, um, and as well as volunteerism, including public and nonprofit board service. So encouraging individuals to volunteer and get out in the community. And then finally, building a stronger sense of county pride and brand. Those are all available on our website. I'm going to drop a link to that page. Um, you would think that would have been easier said than done. But um, as I'm digging for that, I'll uh, go on. We also have our nonprofit learning series. Our nonprofit learning series this year is called Building Better Boards. We've partnered with Johnson Gross Nickel and Associates. Um, they will be doing it this three part series, July 28th. So next Thursday, um, September 8th and November 3rd. These are free of charge. Um, the Community Foundation sponsors these with grant dollars to make those accessible to you. They will all three be at the Hendricks County Fairgrounds. We encourage you to come to all three, but understand you might not be able to. Welcome to come to one and piecemeal through them as you see uh, as you see best for your organization and your schedule. So I'll share the link for that in the chat as well. Um, Next coming soon is our 2022 needs assessment. So for those of you who uh, have been around Hendricks County for a while, you saw our 2019 needs assessment. We're getting ready to launch that on August 1st, but the word is already out and you can access that, um, that survey already. So it is live. If you will fill that out, we'd love for you to do that and share that with your constituents. You'll start hearing more us talk about it more, but we figured since we had about 30 to 40 of you in the room, we should probably share that with you now too while you, we've got your attention. And then finally, this is the really coming soon. We have um, built out a community calendar that will be open to nonprofits, organizations that serve Hendricks County, where you can put dates on this calendar. Um, we've had this request for a long time and never found the right product for this, but we're really excited. We found a great product. Another community foundation is using it. Um, and so you will be able to add your events to that. I'm guessing that'll come out in the next week or so, we're still working out some of the kinks um, and we have some nonprofits testing it right now just to make sure it works. But once that goes live, we'll launch it to everybody. You'll hear more from us about that, but we're really excited to have that community calendar as part of our service to the community. 
pass it back to William. Thanks, Eric. Um, and we are very excited about the community calendar, but uh, one thing I want to stress is that we do hope that you will share uh, information about the, the needs assessment. We'll be refreshing the data from the 2019 needs assessment. It's going to be fascinating to see what has changed in, in our neighbors' perceptions of, of our community and what the needs are here. So please share that on social media, share it with your constituents, with your stakeholders, with your board members. We really need to get as wide a range of uh, opinions expressed as part of the, the refresh as possible. So I wanna give a quick overview of the American Rescue Plan. This was the COVID Relief Act passed by Congress and signed by President Biden last March, uh, in March of 21. Um, it was a $1.9 trillion package of COVID re relief and response. And um, there, there's about $350 billion of it that was dedicated primarily to uh, helping uh, local, county, and uh, tribal governments to address the effects and the ongoing effects of the, the pandemic. Of that, uh, Hendricks County is scheduled to receive about $33 million. Um, and um, of those dollars, uh, they can be spent for a variety of purposes. Some were uh, fairly restricted in terms of uh, broadband access and uh, water treatment and drainage. But uh, with a little foresight, the uh, leaders of Hendricks County through the, the committee that was started uh, have determined that they will be spending a certain amount uh, up to 20% of the $33 million that Hendricks County received on nonprofits. Uh, here's the here's the actual total. Uh, the committee, the the ARPA planning committee, was uh, organized in uh, the fall of last year uh, with both elected and appointed officials from it. And then in February of this year, the committee contacted the community foundation when they determined that they they were going to make a recommendation to the commissioners to uh, to help try to design a grant making program. Uh, they recognize that we have expertise in grant making locally and we recommended a, a two part program, a non-competitive part as well as a competitive part. So we reached out to organizations that really had been key in the response to uh, COVID within our community to determine what the needs of those organizations were as they continued to deal with the ongoing effects of the pandemic. And um, so we, we worked over, over that period with the committee uh, through March and April. In April, we actually signed a memorandum of understanding with the commissioners to do a two-part um, uh, non-competitive and competitive grants program. Um, and then uh, we've worked with the committee on that non-competitive part until the latter part of last month when the committee made a recommendation for those non-competitive grants to 10 key organizations within our community. The commissioners and council uh, have both approved those non-competitive grants at this point. So now we're ready to move forward with the competitive phase of this. Uh, you can find out more information about the, uh, the non-competitive grants on our website, those 10 organizations. Um, and now we're ready to move on to the next phase, which is the competitive grant phase. Uh, and Eric's gonna be talking more about that because we're kicking that off today with this webinar. Thank you, William. <clears throat> so first off, we want to thank our county commissioners and county council for being so thoughtful about setting aside money for our nonprofits. Um, we watched during the height of COVID our nonprofits step up and the fact that they also recognize that with um, these dollars, we're, we're really excited and grateful that they've done that. Um, the, there is about $1.5 million left for nonprofits serving Hendricks County. And so that's kind of the dollar amount we're looking at. It's about $500,000 for 2022, $500,000 again in 23, and then again in 24. So this uh, just about uh, 
quintuples, five times our normal grant dollar amount. Um, and so we're excited to be able to help uh, distribute this into the county outside of the non-competitive grant program. Um, one of the number one questions we always get from nonprofits is how much can we ask for? Um, so I've given you some context on how much is available, but what we understand is we want you to ask for what you need. Like what's the program that would transform your organization, make a larger impact in the work that you already do and ask for it? Um, so I imagine not many of these are gonna be $1,000 grants. I assume they're going to be bigger, but we wanna know what the needs are outside of COVID. These do not have to be COVID specific grants. Um, the, the IRS, or sorry, the US Treasury set aside um, a whole category that's called aid to nonprofits. It's broad and it's big. And so we're asking you to go, how could we serve our community better, differently, in a new way, whatever that might be, and ask for it and put a budget around it and ask for it. So we're gonna get into some of the specifics here. So who is eligible? You need to be a 501c3 public charity that serves Hendricks County. So I know we've got some folks on the peripherals out um, in the room today. And so what we know is you don't have to have a mailbox in Hendricks County to, to access this funds as long as you are serving our community. Um, volunteer fire departments, our county has specifically set aside, wanted to include volunteer fire departments. I don't believe we have anybody from them in here today, um, even if they don't have a 501c3 status. Applicants must be in good standing with the IRS, the state, any other governing body. This is kind of normal grant making criteria point here. Um, whatever funding you're asking for needs to also serve Hendricks County. So your organization may serve a region, but the dollars that you're asking for really needs to be able to be directly tied to Hendricks County. Um, other counties got ARPA money and have chosen to do one thing or another with it. Our commissioners and council really would like this to focus here in Hendricks County. You must be able to pr prove the need um, in Hendricks County and how you're meeting it. Um, we don't fund uh, organizations that discriminate um, in program provision, but also in the organization staffing and hiring decisions. Um, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is one of our key focuses. Um, and we want to make sure that we're only supporting organizations that are open to all as well. And then finally, whatever you're asking for, the funds that you apply for, you have to use it for those um, for those specific purposes. And we have to be, we, we're gonna balance this being really specific um, with giving you some flexibility. So we may work with you at the end of this um, to make sure that we can allow you some flexibility in the spending um, while also being really transparent about what you're asking for. There's some interesting rules on, um, like objects and purchasing and, and things like that, that we'll be careful with once we get applications in the mix. So our law, our list of who is not eligible is bigger. Um, so local units of government and houses of worship are not eligible here, um, even if it's outreach. So I had a conversation with a church last week about this. Um, you know, even if it's kind of community work that you're doing, we're really not using this, these funds to support houses of worship and as well as local units of government, unless you're a volunteer fire department. Again, that goes back to um, specific requests from the county. No grants specifically to individuals or families for personal needs. Um, no bands, no sports teams or other group without a philanthropic project or mission. Um, fundraising, we, this is not to sponsor your fundraising event as, as like a gala, a golf outing, a walkathon, you name it. It's not a, pro, it's not a fundraising sponsorship opportunity. Um, no projects that are aimed at promoting a particular religion or construction projects for religious institutions. Um, same thing goes with political campaigns. No political campaigns or project at aiming a particular political party or candidate. 
no for-profit companies. Um, it, I, there was lines, there, there are lines in ARPA that support for-profit companies, but that's not the dollars we're working with here in Hendricks County. This is the nonprofit set, uh, section. Um, no post-event or after-the-fact situations or debt retirement no endowment building or reserve building. We're also not doing classroom or teacher grants or grants for specific schools or school districts. Um, we are in the process of maybe talking to our education foundations to find out maybe a way we can partner with them in that way, but we don't want individual teachers applying um, or schools for really school-based programming. And then again, um, we've got our non-discrimination policy here, organizations or projects that discriminate based upon race, sex, age, color, religion, national origin, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, citizen status, genetic information, military service, veteran status, or any other category protected under state or local law. I should say that all out loud so everybody heard it and not just saw it. Um, I'm going to pause because I have seen a couple questions come in, and so I want to make sure I'm answering them, and it's as good a time as any. Um, I see a question from, I believe it was Sarah. Are we talking program capital or operations funding requests? Honestly, all three are eligible. So, um, so yes. So the answer is yes, we are talking about all of those things. Um, Jeff with the Medical Reserve Corps. Jeff, why don't we have a conversation afterwards about this and let's see if we can find a way. I know this has been a challenge for you all being kind of quasi-governmental. And so let's chat offline about that. But um, I think we can find a way to make sure that the Reserve Corps uh, it, it can be eligible because we understand kind of what you're doing. Any other questions there since I paused already? You're welcome to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Okay, good, then I just got a chance to get a drink of water. So thank you. Um, feel free to, uh, again, keep the chat going. Um, here's our timeline for this grant program. The application will go live August 1st. I am going to walk you through the application. You also, I believe I have it set up because I think I did it on Friday. You can download the application off of our website now and see it ahead of time. Like this is not supposed to be tricky. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so you can access that already. The applications will close August 31st. Our program committee will then do the first round of review. Our program committee is our grants committee. So they will do the first round of review, which includes uh, a county counselor on that committee now. Um, they will make recommendations to the ARPA task force, the planning committee, to do the second round of review and recommendations. And then they will make recommendations to the county commissioners. Their vote that the meeting that we anticipate this being on the ag agenda is October 25th. The, after they review and vote, then anything that's still in the process goes to the council for review, vote, and financial allocations on November 1st. Our goal is that these are approved and paid by the end of the year. So we are looking at 2023 expenses, even though you'll get cash in 2022. Any questions about the timeline, the folks in the mix? I know there's a lot of names and groups as part of this process. Eric, I'd like to add that um... We anticipate that this process will be the same for each of the coming two years as well. So, and, and probably with the same timeline with the application open for the month of August, then review by our committee, then it will go to the ARPA task force for review and recommendations to the commissioners and then the council so that the, the process will look the same in 23 and 24 as well. And then I saw, we got a question from Lori Blackburn. Would funding include land acquisition for affordable single family housing or rehabs of existing homes? 
Um, I think there's an opportunity there, but I let me do a little bit more research. Maybe I'll talk to you as well to get some details on that to understand exactly what that might mean. But I think there's potential here for that. Hey, hey Eric, this, this is Pat Cocker. I have a question. Sure. Yeah, it, hearing what William just said, so are these grants there? I was thinking you could have a three-year grant, but what you're saying is each year would stand by itself. So if you had a, you can't do a three-year project, you have to do three individual projects. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, that is the way we've designed this program because of, because the funds in this process need to be spent within a year. So if that's something you want to talk about, we could talk about maybe specifics around that project at a separate time, but Yes, these are kind of one year grant cycles. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I, Sarah unmuted earlier. There she is. That was my question too, oh, was okay. about the three year cycle and whether it could run. So that got asked and answered, thank you. Perfect, great, I love that. Um, okay, I'm seeing more direct messages come in. I'll get to you once I get through the process a little bit. I saw yours, Dave. I won't forget you. Um, so I want to walk through the grant application for you. So um, don't mind me here as I try to figure out my technology to make sure I do this right for you. Uh, You should be seeing oh, the back end. This is the back end of our grant program. And here we go. So you're going to see some standard language here. Oh, let me scroll all the way back to the top. There we go. You'll see some standard. Can everybody see this, by the way, before I keep going? OK. Um, so some standard language about the process. Reminder, all grant applications are uh, subject to final approval by the County Board of Commissioners, right? We're asking for applicant information, very standard um, organizational information. Uh, one of the things that I really want to make sure we highlight is that they are asking for who are the authorized signatories for your organization. That's not something we normally ask for. But that's when, as the county is processing, they're going to need to know who can actually sign on behalf of your organization. So we want that here on the front end. Um, we do ask a question about inclusivity, diversity, equity, and accessibility. But I do want to highlight this question is not really used in our evaluation. We're really just trying to understand where our nonprofits are on the topic as we continue to work through what that looks like for our organization in the community. So it is required. We want to know what you say, but this there's no scoring on this section. Um, the other piece that you're going to get as you look uh, on the back end is you kind of get to see how our reviewers go through their first round of review. So any of these blue sections are reviewer questions that they fill out. So do they have a conflict of interest here? Yes or no, they say it right up at the front of the process. This again, this is going to start looking like very normal grant programming, uh, grant application questions. Your request title, they do actually require some form of title. That's how they kind of track it in their back end system. Um, this is an overview of your project. This is word for word from the US Treasury. And I understand as you look at this, there's a lot, there's like a lot there. They're asking for a lot. They have set the 250 word limit, right? We do have word limits on it, but that is their rule, not ours. So you could be mad, but like, please don't. <laughs> Just uh, try to condense your work here as much as you possibly can. Um, if you, if you have a specific website for your request, that's this space. So some folks might have a separate website for a very specific program or whatever. You're welcome to put it here. Um, request start and end date, um, straightforward. We do have a specific budget template. I'm so sorry, again, 
Um, we are also trying to balance the work that our county auditor has to do with all of this work. And so I will show you that template as well. So we'll come back to that here in just a minute, but we do have a specific template uh, for you to use. Um, how much are you requesting? Pretty straightforward. Now all of your narrative pieces, right? So there's about six questions here. You'll know, you will be able to tell the ones that Eric wrote and you'll be able to tell the ones that the US Treasury wrote, I promise. Um, and so again, here's how our committee starts their review. Does this project meet a need in Hendricks County? I, this is my philosophy on grant making that you can get really caught in rubrics and they don't always get you to good funding opportunities. These are a guide to get us to a talking point. So we have always a zero to three guide. No one's ever allowed to sit on the fence. We never have that fifth in the middle kind of space. Talk about how collaborative your program is. Again, we're gonna review that. Does the organization include volunteers and how does that work? How are you, do you plan to measure your success? success? Here are the are our two um, questions from the federal government. Again, that's why you're gonna get a little bit less word count. Um, and they really do want them to be brief here. They really do want them to be brief. This last question is a free space. I always like to give folks a free space because there's probably something you want me or our review committee to know about your organization or the request and you didn't find a place to put it. So it's the star in the middle of your bingo board. Use that to your best ability. Um, you know, it's just an opportunity for you to be able to add something that you want. We do allow for attachments, but none are required. So, you know, the more information you can provide is great. Um, you know, you probably don't need your general organizational brochure here, um, but, you know, if you have something very specific about the project, the program, invoices, you know, quotes, those kind of things, you're welcome to add that here. Um, and then we do ask for your executive director, your CEO, a board president, just to sign off to go, yeah, Lori does have permission to be asking for $500,000 for land acquisitions, and we know she's doing it. It's just to make sure that somebody in the room is talking to everybody because we are asking for one application per organization. So we don't want to see six different applications. If you have kind of a variety of projects, let's talk about it, right? I will be your contact for that. And let's see if we can condense them into one application for you. And then there are kind of just submission information. Um, it's all, you should be able to find my contact information everywhere. I should be your first point of contact for the ARPA grants. Um, our hours are listed here. Um, and then, you know, again, here are the two final questions we ask our committee to review before we meet. You know, does that board, does that committee member have any information regarding the organization that we should know that's outside of the application that they might have information on. Um, and then what questions do you have? What comments do you have about the, the, the process um, altogether? And then this is standard, just ARPA language that you need to read, but it's really boring because it's written by the federal government. So you're welcome to read this. Again, it's at the end of the application. And then yours will have a submit button at the bottom instead of edit, because you're, you're getting the back end side of, of this process. I am going to jump ahead and then jump backwards just because the I wanna make sure I don't screw up the technology piece here. I'm gonna go into the reporting process. So there is there are quarterly reports required, um, including uh, the final report. So, you know, if you're done in six months and you only do two reports, that's fine. That second report will be your final report. Um, I tend to think these are, this is a pretty simple way to do this. Um, I am on the back end going to combine your application with these questions. So you don't have to type in 
the same information multiple times and neither does our auditor. So we've got a process for that. So this is kind of the basics that we'll need on a quarterly basis. What is the organization name? Just so we can connect it to your application. How complete are you through the process? These are the categories the federal government came through. So came up with. So if you find that you're 30%, you choose whichever one you think is best, right? Um, 25, 50%. Your adopted budget total, your cumulative obligations, cumulative expenditures, the current period. So, right, if your, your total cumulative is gonna be across all the quarters you've had the funds, your current period is just the most recent quarter. Um, and then a brief update on your project or program. Right, so that is your narrative section. And then finally, we're asking for one PDF copies of paid original invoices as detailed as possible, itemized receipts, any backup document for your expenditures we, the county will need. This is all the reporting you have to do. So I know there are some folks in the room that have applied for federal grants before. This is not the same. This is not as tedious and, and, and scary. And we really tried to make sure that we get all the information we need without putting an incredible burden on you all. So that is the end of the reporting process. And again, that'll have to be done quarterly or until all the funds are expended. Um, I'm gonna go to the budget template document, but are there any questions about the application broadly, the reporting broadly? Anything look weird in our system as you were, um, as I was scrolling through it. And I can no longer see the chat. So if somebody's chatting. Eric, there is a question uh, from Carla. She says, I'm on the board of two different nonprofits. I've been asked to handle the grant proposals and writing for both of those. Will I be able to fill out an application for both organizations independently? Great question, absolutely. So it's not tied to Carla Janning, it would be tied to the organization. So you would be able to do that both. Good. And I point out that these applications are available on our website. If you go to our homepage and go to four nonprofits, you can find a, a list of uh, subcategories from that and it's apply for a grant and it's ARPA grants from there. It's pretty easy to find the application on our website. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to grab that link and share it in the chat as well, just so you have that directly to the ARPA page. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share the. Uh, <laughs> here, where did those go? There we go. Okay, and here is our budget template. I just want to make sure you have, um, you get to see this. Um, I will, it is not up on our website as a free down, like free, like the application is. It's embedded in the, um, the application, but I will go ahead and add this to our website. So um, you're welcome to just download it and you can start tinkering with it as much as you'd like. Um, organization name, federal ID, just so we are connecting it, budget period, um, budget project name. If you notice here, as soon as you type, in here, once you filled it out, it goes clear. So it's kind of a reminder to fill those out. I did not do this for this because all that yellow would probably drive you insane. Um, so income sources, like is there current revenue for this project? And then your expenses. And the thing I wanna highlight here is you're welcome to add as many rows as you need, as it takes. Um, but if you have questions about what these categories are, um, you can hover over it. And I have a, a little note in each one of those. I know that's probably hard to see in a shared screen, but you will have access to that when you download this. So personal services is generally salaries and wages and employee benefits, right? Our supplies, generally office supplies, operating supplies, maintenance, repairs and maintenance other services most things are falling under other services is kind of how the conversation we had with the auditor and then your uh your capital right land infrastructure building improvements other than buildings machinery etc so um 
if you get your category wrong, like this is not the end of the world. So do not stress too much about this, but this will help our auditor make sure she's um, accounting for all of these different categories separately. Any questions about the budget template? Oh, there's also a space down here at the bottom for notes, if you'd like to add notes about any of the things above. No, okay. Let's see, now can I get back to where we were before? There we go. So you should be able to see the slide. We just went through the application. We just went through the budget template. Um, reporting, remember these are quarterly reports through the grant period, typically one year. If you have a really compelling multi-year project, do not hesitate to call, right? Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. I want to make sure that um, we're not hamstringing any of you in your ability to, you know, do your work. We went through the report um, as well. Also, that that's all online. Um, and now we're open it for any additional questions. I hope I didn't talk too fast. I hope it was just succinct. I will tell you that um, I did get a question previously about whether these funds could be used for matching. So would the, commu would the community foundation or the county be willing to say, hi, Chris, with uh, Hendrix Live, do we're doing a fundraising campaign. Can we use this? Um, can we use this, th these dollars to match this incoming dollars? We're not using that. This is, these are not match eligible, right? So that is not what this is designed to do. Um, I see a question from Tiffany. Would the first grant start officially yeah, that's our goal is that that first grant would be paid by the end of the year. And so your grant period would be January 1 through December uh, 31st. Um, you know, it has been interesting with um, working with the county. So we still aren't sure when some of our non-competitives are getting paid. So I hope that they're paid, but we will adjust that based on when you're getting your cash, right? Like it's not gonna shorten your grant period if uh, if they don't get paid until February. Um, I see Becky says, can the 501c3 applicants partner with non-501c3 C local group to implement the actual work? Yes, yes. We can talk more about maybe if you have really specific questions, but in general, yeah, I could definitely see that being um, a, a, an appropriate expense. Anything else? Hey, Eric, this is Carla Janning. Sure, hey, Carla. <laughs> I thought it was just easier to ask than type. Um, oh. So right now, um, through a grant process I'm doing with Indiana Arts Commission, we had to have something different this year. Normally we have a the um, DUNS number, the D-U-N-S, with the government, and they're mm -hmm. changing it to this unique, um, unique identity number. Um, is that something that we, I couldn't, I didn't pay attention um, to whether you require that on this grant. Is that something we would need to have if you don't already have one? No, um, in fact, it's, so the US, it's a great question. So the US Treasury has, keeps updating its rules. And the most recent final rule um, said that you can use either that unique identification number or your employee identification number. So your tax ID, the organization's tax ID is just fine. Okay, thanks. Because I made that, I actually made that adjustment in the application because originally we had Dunn's number because they were asking for it, um, but they have changed that. And at least the ruling for this. Eric? Yes. This, this is Dave. Uh, I know this is a big ask because there are lots of us, but are you the person and are you available to have kind of brief follow-up conversations to say, hey, this is what we're thinking and maybe maybe say that's you're headed the right way or maybe you should be heading a different way or not headed at all? 
Yeah. Yep. I'm happy to do that. Like here, that's why you have all my contact information right here, just in case you didn't already have it. Most of you have my email in some way, shape or form. I happily will follow up with a copy of the slides if you want them, right? Um, whatever might be useful, but yeah, please feel free to reach out and we'll schedule a time for that. Great question, Dave. I was going to encourage everyone to contact Eric. I'm going on vacation later this week. <laughs> Conveniently for the two weeks leading up until August 1st. Isn't that interesting? Um, let's see. I Anne, I see your question come through. I'll follow up with you um, after, if that's all right. Um, can, and then Chris, can groups collaborate on a grant request together and also qualify to submit a separate grant for their org? Um, yeah, but let's talk about how we'll do that, Chris. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Um, I see you nodding along. So let's talk about that because I think that's a feasible opportunity. Any other questions? Can you believe you actually got out of a webinar 18 minutes early? Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording uh, if I can figure out how to do that. And...